Good morning and welcome to Fifth Street Baptist Church where Reverend Dr. Joshua Dreyer is our pastor and this is our Sunday School Hour with the Senior Adult Class. My name is Vaughn Summers and I'll be your facilitator for this session. We're studying from the theme Spiritual Disciplines. This is a new theme, but this one, uh, Spiritual Disciplines, Becoming More Like Jesus. This is a new theme. But this session here is a, a special focus entitled Created for a Purpose. It's right in between the two uh, major studies that, we're, that we've, we're trying to look at. Uh, the last one was When Emotions Rise. And now this theme is, is called Spiritual Disciplines Becoming More Like Jesus. However, once again, this is a special focus session titled, Created for a Purpose. Let's go to the Lord with an opening prayer. Father, we praise you, Lord, and we thank you for your mercy and your grace toward us. We praise and thank you, Lord, for loving us as you do, for giving us the opportunities to join you in your work uh, of redemption and spiritual growth in, in, our, in our world today. We praise and thank you, Lord, for, uh, to help us to listen uh, along with being obedient, with an obedient attitude, and also to walk humbly with you, Lord, throughout the time in which you give us to be here on this earth. We pray also that you would open our eyes to the truth of this session, that we are created by you for a purpose. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our picture question for this session uh, talks about uh, what would a personality test reveal about you? What would a personality test reveal about you? We find this on page number 84 of your personal study guides. Well, when used correctly, some personality tests uh, can help us to see our blind spots, our blind spots, and learn how to understand and live with others who have a unique set of gifts or emotions. Now, we find that our culture, in our culture, it, it, it often, often determines a person's value by how that person can contribute to the society in which they live, or not to be a burden to others. Now, some people question the value of a person who cannot stand on their own two feet. But God never does that. Every person has value and purpose to God. Now, the Bible helps us understand who we are as God's children. Our self-discovery comes from knowing who made us, who knows us, and who calls us into his mission. So the point of this session, and we find this on page 85 of a personal study guide, the point of this session is God values each of us and created us for a purpose. Let's pray and ask the Lord's blessing on our Bible study. Father, once again, we praise and thank you, Lord. The Bible says that we are put here for, for uh, to bring glory and honor to you. It also tells us that we are, are your workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. It also says that you want us to have a, an intimate relationship with you, which is, which is essential if we are going to discover our true purpose here. So help us, O oh God, to grow in grace and in, knowledge, in, in the knowledge of you uh, that we may agree with you about our true purpose purpose here in this session. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture is taken from the, the, the uh, book of Jeremiah, the first chapter. Uh, our text will be verses 4 through 10. However, I'll read 1 through 1 through 10 as we start our session this time. In verse 1 it says, Jeremiah's ministry lasted about 40 years, now, this is the background 
uh, background to these scriptures. Jeremiah ministry, it lasted about 40 years during the reigns of the last five kings uh, of Judah. Now the five kings we're talking about here are Josiah, uh, Jehoaz, Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin, and Zedekiah. Now Josiah was the last righteous king who died in 609 BC. And from then until the Babylonian captivity in 586 BC, the nation of Judah was on a continual spiritual downward spiral. Now King Zedekiah refused Jeremiah's warning and rebelled against Babylon, which led to the destruction of Jerusalem in the temple and the temple. So our scripture text, I'll be reading from the NASB, and it says this in verse 1. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests who were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It, it came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the end of the eleventh year, Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the exile of Jerusalem in the fifth month. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, in verse 4, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Alas, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, because I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, because everywhere I send you, you shall go, and all that I command you, you shall, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord stretched out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have appointed you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Now we'll break these ten verses or nine or, or seven verses down into uh, uh, sections with our first section, verse by verse discussion, being Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 4 and 5. Verse 4 says, Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. Note the key word in, on page 86 of your personal study guides to further explain the term formed. Key word formed in verse 5. The, the word means created, much like a potter. Uh, would form a vase or a vase or a bowl on the potter's wheel from clay. Now in verse 4 it says, Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, This is God. God has a purpose for every life. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah in the 13th year of the reign of King Josiah of Judah from 640 to 609 B.C. God called Jeremiah to be his prophet. While God doesn't call people to be prophets like Jeremiah today, uh, we find that he desires to have a relationship with each of us. This relationship begins by repenting and placing our faith in Jesus Christ, God's Messiah and our Redeemer. Now when we come to faith in Christ, God adopts us into his family. As his children, he desires to have a continuing conversation with us. Now we have this conversation through Bible reading and study, praying to God, and being attentive and listening to Him. So in verse 5 it says, Before I form you, God says, In the womb, He tells Jeremiah, 
I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. Now, God has had a special purpose for Jeremiah to be his prophet. God has a special purpose for each of us, our lives. Now, when we look at the magnificent creation, even the design of an ordinary leaf on the ground or as it hangs on the trees, not to mention the majestic mountains we may see in pictures, or for some of us have been who have uh, seen these mountains in, in person, or all of us as we look up at, at, this, at the uh, stars at night in the sky. You know, the Bible says in, in, in Romans chapter 1, it says, verse 20, it says, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. Out excuse. So look on page 86 of your personal study, guys. And we're there we can find more important truths about God. It says there that God exists outside of time. He didn't have a beginning. He wasn't created. It also says that God values life. Life is always valuable to God. Even in the earliest embryonic stages of human existence, even when life is fragile, and depended on someone else in older age. That human being is known and valued by God. Now the crown of God's creation is humanity. In Psalms number 8, verses 4 through 9, the Bible says this, What is man that you take thought of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than God. And you crown him with glory and majesty. You make him to rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, and the fish of the sea. Whatever passes through the paths of the seas, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Every human being is created in God's image. Every one of in, in every one an image bearer of God. In Genesis chapter one verses twenty six and twenty seven and Genesis chapter five verses one and two tells us. Now every human being is created with a purpose. And we give glory to God as we live our lives according to God's will and purposes. So God told Jeremiah, he says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Now, the Hebrew term for chose can also be translated as new, according to background information. Now, it also tells us that it had a range of meanings from the acquisition of factual knowledge, well, I actually knew something, to a relational intimacy, including sexual relations. We find this mainly in the King James Version. Now, in this instance, it has the meaning of God choosing Jeremiah for a relationship that was tailored specifically for him or to him as God's prophet. It also says that God chose Jeremiah also to speak to God's, uh, it also speaks to God's foreknowledge and purpose by God choosing Jeremiah that way. God's plan for Jeremiah was set out before Jeremiah existed. God did the same for us in his redemptive plan as he listed it in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. He says, Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. It also says that he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, 
according to the kind intention of his will. Now God said he formed Jeremiah. Information tells us that the Hebrew term rendered formed is also found in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, which says, Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Now the term also uh, related to the word for potter as found in Jeremiah 18 verses 2 through 4. It is the Almighty God who formed the mountains. Amos 4.13 That was intimately involved with creating Jeremiah and also us. Now the second part of, ver uh, of verse 5 parallels with the first part. However, using different words to emphasize the same point. It says, and before you were born, I, I consecrated you. Now, information tells us that the Hebrew term for set apart can also be translated as consecrated or sanctified. That is, God set Jeremiah apart, consecrated him for his own use. Now, we too have been set apart in Jesus Christ. When a person repents and places his or her trust or her faith in Jesus Christ, God sets that person apart. God adopts him or her into his family, the body of Christ, the church, and sets that person apart for his purposes of bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world and for the building up of his people, the body of Christ, the church. Now, believers are also sanctified in the sense of being made more and more like Christ himself. This is a lifelong process done through the power and, and uh, the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit that is achieved as the believer lives out God's purposes for his or her life. Now God also told Jeremiah that he appointed him to be his prophet and God expected Jeremiah to accept that responsibility and carry it out to the best of his God-given ability. Now, Jeremiah's field of ministry would be the, the nations. God's planners are always big. As we live in relationship to those around us, we share God's love with them, especially the gospel message. So how do you respond to the truth that God knows you personally? In the next verses, we will see Jeremiah's initial response to God's call as we continue to study the Bible in section 2. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Those verses are found in Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. Verse 6 says, Then I said, Alas, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, because I am a youth. Verse 7 says, But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, because everywhere I send you, you shall go, and all that I command you, you shall speak. In verse 8 it says, Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Let's look now at our verse-by-verse -verse discussion of these three verses. 6, 7 through 8. 6, 7, and 8. It says, Then I said, Alas, Lord, God, behold, I do not know how to speak, because I am a youth. Note the key word in these verses, youth. The term has a broad range of meaning, including those who are too young to understand the meaning and purpose of life, such as children or teenagers. Well, Jeremiah's response to God's call on his life was less than enthusiastic. However, God is always with us to carry out his purpose when he calls us. Jeremiah gave God two reasons why he couldn't do what God wanted him to do. He says, I do not know how to speak. Now, this was a major problem for one who was being called to proclaim God's word to the nations. Uh, the next excuse, excuse was, I'm only a youth. 
which speaks to Jeremiah's sense of immaturity. Jeremiah thought he was too young and unqualified to be God's prophet. While on the surface, both of his reasons speak to a lack of ability to perform the task. However, behind the words was a lack of trust in God. Note the excuses we make when God calls us. We find this uh, on pages 88 and 89 of your personal study guides. The excuse of deficiencies and the excuse of age and inexperience. Now the same God who formed Jeremiah would empower him to and equip him for the task that lie ahead. God didn't make a mistake in placing Jeremiah in that time and place with the gifts and skills he had. And God doesn't make a mistake with you or me in the unique and difficult callings he sets before us. Note the, note the last paragraph on page 89 of your personal study guides. I'm going to read it here too also. On page 89 of your personal study guides, it says this, similarly, we can take comfort in and be encouraged that God will be with us through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. God promises his presence to every believer regardless of age or season in life. Just as Jeremiah was not, was not to let his age keep him from surrendering to his creator, so adults today shouldn't wait until they're, they are older to surrender their lives to Jesus. Being used by God knows no age restrictions, young or old. The way of a disciple is to listen to the voice of God and step into his mission, regardless of age or experience. Age is not an issue, for the God who knows us and forms us will be with us. He will be with us as we live out his purpose for our lives. So in verse 7 of our text, it says, But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a you, because everywhere I send you, you shall go, and all that I command you, you shall speak. Now God rejected Jeremiah's reasoning that he was too young. Jeremiah needed to focus more on God than his own self and his shortcomings. God told Jeremiah, you will go to everyone I send you to and speak whatever I tell you. Jesus Christ told his, his disciples similar words in Luke chapter 12, verses 11 through 12. He said, when they bring you before the synagogues and the rulers and the authorities, do not worry about how or what you are to speak in your defense. Or what you are to say, for the Lord, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that day, in that very hour, what you ought to say. So the same power of God that was to be present in Jeremiah's prophetic ministry would be present in the apostles as they brought the gospel to the nations. The Holy Spirit is also with us as we bring the gospel to the world and stand for Christ in our society. Now, as we go on in verse 8, it says, Do not be afraid of them, God says, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. God assures those he calls and equips those he sends. He says, Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. God's words provided comfort for Jeremiah. It wasn't up to Jeremiah to figure out what to say or where to go or to provide his own protection. God would be right there with Jeremiah every step of the way, even when we consider that during his prophetic ministry, Jeremiah was in prison for proclaiming God's word. We find this, these situations in Jeremiah's chapters 33 and, and 37 and 38 and 39. God was still there to rescue him, but God would rescue Jeremiah during those times in God's time, according to God's schedule, not Jeremiah's. He would rescue him not a minute sooner, 
and not a minute later, God would be right on time. God promised to be with Jeremiah through the hard times and trials and to deliver him from those times. What would Jeremiah learn through all of those times? Well, we as believers have similar assurances. The Apostle Paul wrote in the book of Romans that believers who have within, within us God's indwelling Holy Spirit as a promise that we are God's children and heirs who will receive eternal life, according to Romans 8, 8 through 16. And also, God is working in our lives to accomplish his purposes. And nothing we experience or encounter can ever separate us from God's love in Jesus Christ, according to Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 38. Now, the, the phrase, declares the Lord, concludes verse 8 of this section of verses. Information tells us that the Hebrew term for, for Lord is Yahweh, which is God's personal covenant name. It also tells us that the Hebrew term for, de, for declaration, like uh, declares the Lord, occurs 176 times in the book of Jeremiah and is derived from the word meaning to whisper. You know, one commentator has noted that the, the term may suggest an intimate revelation, such as, I'm going to let you in on a, on a secret. Well, these final words from God were, were a further assurance to Jeremiah that it was the Lord God who was speaking to Jeremiah. And what God promised Jeremiah, God will fulfill. Now, God spoke to the the prophet Jeremiah, and he speaks to us today in many with different, many ways, such as reading the reading and studying his word, the Bible. He speaks to us through prayer, through godly people. God speaks to our hearts through the Holy Spirit by all these means. And God expects us to listen and obey. The Holy Spirit will never tell us to do anything that contradicts God's revealed word, which is the Bible. So what are some excuses we use for not doing what God and his commands us to do? And when have you experienced the provision of God's presence or deliverance? Next, we will discover how God provides what is needed to accomplish the task he assigns uh, to those he calls as we continue to study the Bible in section 3, which includes Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Well, verse 9 says, Then the Lord stretched out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. In verse 10 he says, See, I have appointed you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow to build and to plant. Let's look now at our verse-by-verse -verse discussion of these verses. You know, God equips us with what we need to carry out his purpose. Note, to, note the two things God said in his call to Jeremiah on page 90 of your personal study guides. Verse 9 says, Then the Lord stretched out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your, in your mouth. Well, God touched the mouth that would speak his words to the nations. God commissioned Jeremiah to go forth as his prophet. God was for Jeremiah, therefore, who could stand against him? God was for him. Jeremiah had a God-sized task ahead of him which is enough to overwhelm him. But God assured him that he would provide Jeremiah with what he needed to fulfill God's call. You may call in, in the New Testament when the angel Gabriel uh, uh, appeared to, to, to Mary to announce to her that she would give birth to God's Messiah. Well, Mary was naturally confused as to how all this would take place since she had never had sexual relations with a man. 
The angel Gabriel explained that the child would be conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit. He also explained that her relatives, Elizabeth, were also conceived in her old age by her husband, Zachariah. He then assured Mary by saying, For nothing will be impossible with God. Luke chapter 1 verse 37. Now the things God calls us to do are definitely impossible for us to do in our own strength and ability. But with God, nothing is impossible. God told Jeremiah, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. God's presence in his life and God's word in his mouth. Jeremiah is now equipped, fully equipped, to accomplish the task task God gave him to do. Jeremiah would go forth to proclaim the word of God with the words God had given him. In verse 10 it says, See, I have appointed you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build up and to plant. Now information tells us that the Hebrew term translated appointed carries both the meanings to appoint and to give charge. It also means, it also has the meaning of pay attention. Jeremiah was to pay attention to what God was telling him and to be attentive to fulfill his prophetic duties. God had appointed Jeremiah to be his prophet over the nations and kingdoms. Now some nations were receptive and were, and some were not. God had appointed Jeremiah to uproot and tear down, to destroy and to demolish. God was ready to bring judgment on nations, and some would receive warnings from God. Through Jeremiah, such was the case in 2 Kings chapter 25, verses 1 and 2, and Jeremiah chapter 52, verses 1 through 5. These involved King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, and King Zedekiah of Judea, of Judah. After God's judgment came God's restoration. Jeremiah was called to build and to plant. Now the important part to this section is that judgment would always precede restoration and rebuilding. Now one commentator notes, the order is important. Judah's idols and immoral practices, they had to be purged before God could bless the nation. Erroneous beliefs and practices must be destroyed before reconstruction can take place. After God's call, there, there was God's presence and God's promises and then God's deliverance. However, there were times when Jeremiah wrestled with God over his prophetic call. One such incident we find in Jeremiah chapter 19, when a guy by the name of Pashur, the chief official of the Jeru Jerusalem temple, had Jeremiah beaten and placed in prison because of his words. We find this in Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 1 and 2. Well, Jeremiah accused God of having deceived him and lamented that he had ever been born. We find this in Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 7 through 18. However, in these cases, we are no different from Jeremiah. Even though we haven't been called to be prophets, or maybe haven't been beaten and put in prison, maybe not just yet, but God has specific purposes for each of our lives. There will be times of doubt and trouble in our lives. During those times, we need to remember that, God, that as God's servants and God's children, we are in locations and positions exactly where God wants us to be. And God wants to use us in these venues to accomplish his purpose. We must also remember that God has equipped each one of us with his presence and his promises to be able to deal with any and all situations we face. So how do we make ourselves available for God to use us as we live it out this week? 
Now, regardless of any weakness or limitations, we, we, we are valued by God and created for a purpose. Regardless of any weakness or limitations we may have. How will you live out that purpose this week? Well, three suggestions as we usually get. The first one being seek. Pray and seek God's face. Ask him to show us the ways he can use us for his kingdom. Next is surrender. It says put, put your eyes, put your yes, put your yes on the table and trust God to empower us for service. Step out in obedience, trusting the power of the Holy Spirit. Carry out God's calling in your life. And then support. Support and encourage people who are forgotten and overlooked by others. Find practical ways to help those whom the culture deems helpless because God values them and has a purpose for them. The point of this session is God values each of us and created us for a purpose. As we wrap this up, remember, that we are valuable to God in every stage of our lives, including this one that we're going through right now. We are to look for ways to be advocates for the sanctity of life from birth to death in our circles of influence. Let's close in prayer. Thank you, Father, for valuing us in this season of our lives. Thank you for giving us purpose and keeping us a part of your redemptive plan for the world today. Please help us to value others because you value us, O oh Lord, as we, as we go about our, 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 our business this week. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.